Just the transport side, uh, they think is approximately 500 billion euros um, and they'll spend... Um, 500 billion euros. So it's about one, if I was to measure it another way, that's the like approximate equivalent of one giant glass city in the desert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Offsite Podcast and uh, a huge welcome back to Jason, who's rejoined after a couple of episodes. How are you doing, mate? I'm, I'm well rested. Um, I'm sleeping 12 hours a night. I'm feeling great. I haven't changed any nappy. No, no, it's, it's a struggle. <laughs> Uh, so is the second is the second easy you know when people are like oh the second one is like 1.5 the effort is that true no you you want to get that beeper ready although it's fucking way harder um <laughs> so it's a solid double effort <laughs> arguably a bit more no one plus one equals three for sure yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> definitely nice um, but I'm I'm pumped for uh, a podcast. I, I think we just get straight into it. You know, our normal structure of the podcast is we like introduce it, then we talk about the background of the topic, and then uh, we dive straight into like a prediction about what's going to happen around the topic. So I think we go straight into it because we're going to talk about some football match that you you've been banging on about. So do you want to do you want to dive I... into the background and then predict predict who's going to win the match? <laughs> I can't say anything because I will jinx it. But we can we can talk about that next week if uh, if things go to plan. Uh, you'll see me in an England top for sure. So so we're recording this uh, before. Uh, when is this? When is we, the match yeah, or we, game or, or sport event yeah, or whatever the right? We won the semi final last night and okay. the, the finals this coming Sunday. So um, yeah, squeaky bum time. Okay, and then who who versus? Uh, England, Spain, and Spain definitely look like the strongest team. So we need another small miracle. Okay. And then prediction? If we play like we did in the first half last night, we'll win. If we don't... If the game's only half a half a match long, then you, you've... Yeah, you've... yeah, 100%. But the, the thing is with, with Spain, we're going to get too deep now, but Spain are really good in the first half and bad in the second. And if there's something England are good at, it's holding a nil-nil till the last minute. So if we can get through that phase... I think it's ours. But yeah. When you say that's nil a, nil to last sense. minute, you when you say nil nil to last minute, and then it falls over in the last minute, or that you take it to no, the no. We keep with scoring in the last minute. It's really lucky, and it's a terrible, terrible okay. strategy. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, right? Should we get into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was the topic. Yeah, let's let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I did say to the guys we should do stadiums next week if we win, and I can wear my England top. But uh, anyway. So today we are going to chat about a huge European infrastructure scheme, which you've probably never heard of, um, or at least it doesn't get enough coverage. Um, so the Rail Baltica scheme, it's a, a greenfield rail transport um, infrastructure project, um, and its aim is to integrate the Baltic states. So Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. And it's not just integrating those three nations, but integrating it into the wider sort of European rail network. So that's part of a broader thing called the North Sea Baltic Corridor, which is connecting Helsinki to Antwerp. So it's kind of the section in the mm -hmm. middle. Mm -hmm. This particular section, um, so it's all a high speed rail network, but it has some issues because it's basically a Russian gauge railway. So they can't use any of the existing lines because it's the wrong uh, width. Technical rail people would might be interesting to know it's something like 70 i thought you were gonna i thought you were gauge. gonna say that you were saying something technical when you said the wrong width i'm like no i'm still with you there it's yeah is it, <laughs> gauge <laughs> is it wider yeah. or narrower that's the big question yeah it's slightly too uh the russian network is slightly too wide okay um but the rail itself it's 870 kilometers across the three um baltic states seven new major stations and then a bunch of regional ones Designed for high-speed rail, as I mentioned, 249 kilometers an hour. Largely funded by the EU. I think they're paying for 85%, 15% by the three nations themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it did have an original price of $6 billion, but that was something like 20 or 30 years ago when you yep. account for inflation. It's about $15 billion uh, US dollars. So, th like, this is a project, like a massive infrastructure project, and I don't think I, apart from niche channels on 
LinkedIn that I follow. I don't think I hear anyone talking about it ever in any context ever. Why do you think that is? I think there's two parts to it in terms of like eyes on either news outlets or social media. The first is the contractors involved aren't the big, huge contractors that we're used to seeing. So it's not the the Vinci's, the BAMs, the Skanskas, where you would naturally we, see a lot more like the information we build and IFARS have like we build and IFARS have big packages on on there. I think don't quote me. Yeah, but uh, I think if I'm wrong, we'll cut it. It's fine. Uh, yeah, no, I think it will depend where you are, right? So in the UK, I can only think of one contract that we build on and one that IFARS you on, and I know that's right. just a lack of knowledge on my side, but they're not like commonly sort of. Yeah, yeah. you sound very. You, you're sounding. You're sounding very American now. Like it, it didn't happen <laughs> yeah, in yeah, Delaware. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I think maybe partly that one of the bigger jacks on it is straw bag, but even those like they've they've got a few co- projects here, so it's not within the big mm. organizations. It's not the UK we're contractor. See, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but our <laughs> our network of individuals that share a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. they won't be working for these companies. So I think it's partly that, but the other thing is. When you actually look at the broader, like EU, I forget the technical name, the European, uh, the trans European network, mm-hmm. you know, I mentioned it's like this small cog covering the Baltic states, which is part of this corridor, which is yeah. Helsinki yeah. to Antwerp. That's yeah. one of nine actual schemes across the whole of Europe. Yeah. So I think because it's so big what they're doing, this is such a small section, it won't get the news. So I wonder if the actual overall European transport network across Europe is actually a lot more sort of highlighted. It's over 15,000 kilometers overall. The total, the total thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and, so there's all these and this corridors section, connecting. This section, which is the Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, is was it 870 kilometers? Is that, am I, is that the right? Eight, yeah, 870. So it's, it's like one twentieth of the overall, the overall network that they're building. And just for a way of context, like it's underway. It started how long ago, do you reckon? So this one, it was, I think they, they originally went through planning and EU bits and pieces in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Construction I got, yeah, started. That's the fact that, yeah, yeah. 1990s, it was proposed. And then it started in yeah. 2000, 2010. Yeah, but they signed some cooperation. Because obviously it's crossing three countries, right? So yeah, uh, that's a whole other part of the topic to dive into, which is, how trying to get yeah, can one you imagine? rail line going through three <laughs> suburbs in 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 this major city is like a, a yeah. nightmare. This is it's a countries. big stress just just dealing with like network rail and TFL. Yeah, yeah. Let alone three <laughs> governments and the EU. Yeah. So yeah, that that's so wild. That was um, 2001, and then yeah, started like 20 something. Yeah, um, but I think it's due for completion in 2026. It's not too long. But if you look like. Uh, in today's world, if you look at where this is on the map, for those that aren't totally dialed in on their map of Europe and where Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia is, it is like literally uh, straight up the Russian border. And if you think strategically, like strategically, this is a big uh, problem. They've got these three countries with this rail network that's on the Russian gauge that doesn't properly integrate with the rest of the European network you know if any in terms of a defense strategy the ability to take rail cargo from mainland europe up to this big extended border is like critical importance so there's a lot of conversation about how this needs to happen like right now now um yeah and and, and, and talk about imagine, accelerating the end date and you can imagine it's a real like it's really tightening the grip on your like economic growth if you can't just haulage and imports and exports, you're really stuck within those three states in Russia if you're unable to transport goods and everything else. So But yeah, yeah this is so, that this is the big border all the way up. You know, everyone talks about that big like Finland border with Russia. Like this is yeah, it's it's a large, a large part of the 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 Russian border that doesn't the ability to transport goods by rail critical importance for them so yeah they're they're talking about there's a lot of conversation that i've seen news about bringing the end date forward if possible um just to give an idea of some of the other sort of sections of the overall network you've got the north sea mediterranean corridor dublin to brussels you've got lisbon to strasbourg you've got genoa to rotterdam like there are these massive interconnecting uh, you ever played ticket to ride Uh, no (laughs) 
<laughs> it's a it's a really popular famous board game where you basically build uh rail networks across europe so it does it does have a it does have a ticket to ride vibe i'll send you i'll send you uh, i'll send you a picture the only the, geographic the, the aim of the game, game i played is risk yeah yeah no no it's not yeah that that's the that's the other part of different at the moment that's <laughs> yeah. um no no but this side's more ticket to ride vibe uh, and so the, the aim of the game of Ticker Rail is build these big, long, connected rail routes. Um, and then the way that you defend against it is build bits of routes to block people. So it'd be interesting to see if that's what's happening in the European countries, where they're like building rail to block people from from uh, from having the big uh, longest rail award and win the game. Nice. I, think I doubt really it. Probably that. doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, moving on. Cost. So... We mentioned earlier, um, it looks like it's going to finish at around 16 billion, which um, on the face of it, gut feel, that seems what quite car- reasonable for what, 870 what kilometers. Yeah, is that, is that euro? Uh, US dollars, I think. That does, given the scale of uh, what other things seem to cost, um, you know, like a you know, nuclear power station or a, or a metro in the middle of a city or the price of an avocado, that seems like... Um, that seems relatively good value. <laughs> I don't know if you follow the news in the UK, but apparently the reason why our generation aren't buying houses is because they spend too much money on avocados and flat whites. Uh, so that's well, a nice you must have just there. imported that from Australia because Australia has been saying that for the last five years to anyone that can't buy, uh, you know, uh, yeah. you can't buy a house because you've bought too many avocados. But it's said by the boomers who bought houses for twenty grand with like a five grand mortgage. So and they got ton- they got all the avocados <laughs> as well. So. <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah the the scheme itself it's largely greenfield so obviously it's going to be cheaper than building like like a hs2 in london and all these ter- like really congested areas um but just to give it an idea of uh cost if you divide the cost of the scheme by how long the scheme is this particular project is about 17 million dollars per kilometer mm-hmm if you compare that to a few other major schemes, so we've got the uh, the Vegas high speed rail, which is yep. 350 kilometers long, which is 1.2 billion. Sorry, mm-hmm. which is 12 billion, not 1.2 billion. That would have been really okay. impressive. Yeah, yeah. So that works out to 35 million per kilometer. So double. Okay. So double. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. yep. So double already seems like a big leap, considering Vegas is also in the middle of the desert. So you know, yeah, the, that if, if that yeah that has to be greenfield, unless they're just yeah. doing like runs up and down the strip. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. If we then move on to uh, the California high speed rail, mm-hmm. two hundred and seventy five kilometers long, mm-hmm. which isn't that much longer than Vegas. Uh, we jump from 12 to $35 billion, and that's $127 billion, uh, sorry, $127 million per <laughs> kilometer, okay? So we're now, we're now at seven and a half times Rail Baltica in terms of cost. Yes. Um, you would expect, obviously, if that California is going to be a bit more built up than Vegas and uh, Baltics. Yep. Then we move on to high speed two, 225 oh, kilometers long. Uh, mm-hmm. 66 billion. Is it only is 225 kilometers long? Yeah, the new one's just to Birmingham, right? It's like 100 and something miles. Right. Um, yeah. 66 billion, they reckon, which is <laughs> nearly $300 million uh, per kilometer, 17 times more expensive than Rail Baltica. And also, when you throw in. million per kilometer. <laughs> yeah. And also, Rail Baltica, I think there's seven major stations they're building, plus regional. HST, there's four. Yeah. So, like, the majority is just like rail and viaducts and, and demolition. But that's, that seems pretty wild. I don't think we can blame inflation on that one. I, we should just get those contractors to come and, and build r- railways in, in the UK, right? I thought you were going to say that we should get them onto the show and ask them why. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> How do you do the things that you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, super impressive. Let us know the secret. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's quite the increase. I don't know enough about um, projects in America to know if the numbers we're going through are already crazy overruns or sort of tender. Yeah, the, those two. The, well, the the Vegas one was over, but not wildly over. California is famously 
over budget. Um, but even that was paling in comparison to HS2, which is uh, is wildly over budget. Well, not wild. Well, depends what budget. It's it's the classic thing of depends where you're measuring from. Uh, if you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If yeah, you measure from like, the initial budget, yeah, it's it's big style over. Yeah, for sure. How does that compare to Australian major infrastructure schemes? Are they pretty good at keeping the cost fairly consistent? We don't have, do a, have we, similar we don't have, we, do, we have no high speed rail. There's, we have an inland rail project at the moment which isn't properly connected up, so it's very hard to know the overall cost, and it's let in so many packages. If I was a better co-host of the podcast, I would do that. I would have that research to hand, but there's just not a lot of, uh, there's like no high speed rail really. There's, well, we're, we're, we're trying, we're having a, we're trying to hand at building metros at the moment and we'll get to high speed rail eventually. Nice. So touching back then. So if you remember the, the trans European network and that mm-hmm. overall plan for Europe is split into like the transport side and then there's connectivity so things like broadband for all countries and everything like that um as well as energy just the transport side uh they think is approximately 500 billion euros um and they'll spend um 500 billion euros. so it's about one if I was to measure it another way that's the like approximate equivalent of one giant glass city in the desert <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, that one. Um, yeah. I think the the majority of it is planned to be spent before 2030. So it's it's not like this long 30, 40 year vision. It's like they're going at it now. Um, the overall, it, it, it includes 65,000 kilometers of railway lines. So obviously the chunk we focused on was the high speed rail, but there's a lot more around it. Um, yeah. 136,000 kilometers of roads, 23,000 kilometers of inland uh, inland waterways, which... Seems interesting. Is that a canal? <laughs> Is that me being I think an that's idiot? a canal. Well, yeah, maybe maybe it includes things that are like quasi canals and things that are not not quite as big as a a canal. Yeah. But but I do have I have I have hot news in. While you've been talking, I've been uh, finding my pre prepared research. Yeah. Uh, the the rail project in Australia that you did ask me about several minutes ago is the equivalent cost of twenty one billion. USD uh, and is it's not finished by any means, but it's supposed to be seventeen hundred kilometers long. Whoa! So that must be that must be better value than Baltica. My my iPhone uh, calculator doesn't do. Does it go to e numbers? Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got um, a spreadsheet here. Hold on. What were the numbers? One one thousand seven hundred kilometers. Yep. And uh, twenty. I need it in dollars. One billion USD, right? Yeah, twenty-one okay, cool. billion. Drum roll. Oli will put a drum roll over the top of this while we wait and see. Whoa! Twelve million dollars per kilometre, which is about thirty percent cheaper than Rail Baltica per kilometre. Yeah, it is going really through like impressive. the outback of Australia on a freight line with almost no stops. Uh, you just laid like, track onto sand, right? That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So yeah, the scope is is slightly easy, I think. Um, no disrespect for the teams building inland rail uh, that we work with. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, nice. But relatively, yeah. Cool. All right, we'll just move on. Next topic. I, uh, I'm looking at the time and we've actually smashed through uh, our minutes there. But um, yeah, I think we mentioned at the beginning the biggest project that you might never have heard of. I had absolutely no idea the scale of what they're actually trying to do in Europe. We stupidly left uh, the European Union fairly recently. So we probably see less than we would if we were part of it because England, well, the UK is now sort of outside of those plans. But yeah, 500 billion over the next, obviously some of it is done, but there's a hell of a lot of money being spent over the next you, sort of yeah, six, probably years. the UK's probably already contributed to a lot of the construction with their breakout fee and contributions to the EU beforehand. But yeah, yeah. we probably won't see any any of the benefit of it. Did you uh, also come across some of the other big rail projects that are coming, like kind of into Europe uh, through the Belt and Road Initiative? I wasn't aware of the the uh, Belgrade Budapest. Is that something that came up on your radar? Not at all. Uh, it's a 350 kilometer rail line that is almost finished being built uh, between yeah Belgrade in Serbia and Budapest in Hungary. 
uh, it is largely is part of the Belt and Road Initiative, so the big China infrastructure investment initiative, where they're essentially helping finance all, all roads lead to China projects. To yeah, all roads yeah. lead to China project. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they are winning Ticket to Ride. Basically, they're playing Ticket to Ride and <laughs> kicking. But um, <laughs> uh, and so uh, yeah, largely finance it. Yeah, three hundred and fifty kilometers long. Most of it was funded by a loan from China to either Hungary or Serbia to, to yeah. build the, the projects. Um, so they lent them a couple of billion dollars equivalent um, to, to build the rail line. Um, Some sort of So yeah, you're right. There's, there's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's the ticket to ride strategy. Yeah, if, if, if only, the, I guess, the, not to like bang on about mainstream news uh, and be one of those people, but like if the news actually covered the amount of infrastructure and happening across Europe, there is a ton of stuff going on, especially in rail. Right. I think that's all the time we have today. So thank you very much for tuning into the show. Um, if you have enjoyed today's episode, please do like the video um, and yeah, follow us on your chosen podcast platform. Uh, we really do appreciate the support. And I'll uh, see you all next week. Thank you.